Welcome to Life Renovations. This is week nine. I'm Carrie Collins. Um, we are sailing right along. We just passed the two month mark. And I'm so happy that you're all keeping up with the lectures. I have heard some feedback from people that a lot of people are behind in their work, but I wouldn't sweat it. Some weeks will be easier than others. And I want to make sure that you're continuing to make progress. So some of the diet challenges can be done in the same week. Like for instance, this week is all about watching what you drink. It's not really a tough challenge, so it's easy to to backtrack and also try cutting out gluten this week as well. The physical challenges are also easy to catch up on. So just jump to this week, learn a bunch of stretches, you'll be fine, no problem. Um, the journaling can be done anytime you sit down for some quiet time. So I'd suggest taking yourself out to lunch or dinner and sitting down with your journal for like an hour break. And if you do that once or twice this week, you'll be surprised at how much you get done. So don't worry if you get to a section that asks you to track everything daily. Just kind of look back at the past few days and write what you can remember. Now the meditations are best done when you can really practice them, but it's okay to do a few days instead of all seven days, especially with the visualizations. You can catch up, and when you do, I want you to send me a short description of your experience thus far. For everyone who does, you'll receive a PDF of the lecture transcriptions from the first three months, and I'll put your name in my book as an acknowledgement. Um, also, I'll choose a few testimonials, the best ones, to go in the book, so don't leave out any details, and um, you can send me to these even by email before week 13, I'll try to remind you. This week, we're going to get back into affirmations, add in some more stretches, and talk about some choices about what we drink. So everything I've taught you um, up to this point has led to a very important lesson on affirmations. Everything that we want as humans, mainly health, wealth, and love, can be attained through positive statements that change your thinking patterns. The particular affirmation that's used in the master key is this catch-all affirmation that you can use many times a day. In fact, I'd like you to take a minimum of eight note cards, write the following statement on them, and post them all over to the all, all over your house. I'm sorry. All participants are muted. Um, next to your bed, on the bathroom mirror, next to the coffee pot, in your closet, in your wallet, whatever. I mean, you've done affirmations before. You know what's um, what's the best for you. And the same thing if you feel uncomfortable posting it where other people can see, put one in your wallet. And then something in other places that remind you to say the affirmation, like a sticker somewhere or a trinket, or like if you have a necklace, every time you touch the necklace, you can think, okay, I'm going to say my affirmation now. So here's the affirmation, and it's actually written up on the screen as well. It's, I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. The theory behind affirmations is that you can only change your thought patterns by gradually replacing the negative with the positive. So we all know someone who's constantly negative and appreciates an audience to vent to, right? Sometimes we can be that person. Surrounding that person with a fun loving crowd, they eventually just get bored and they leave the room. Like if they, if they don't feel that their negativity is being fueled, then they just leave. So the same thing, if your house is cold, you turn up the heat. Gradually the hot air mixes in with the cold air and the temperature gradually goes up. The only way to get rid of cold is to just add in heat, let it slide. The only way to get rid of bad thoughts is by introducing new thoughts until they completely take over. So the same thing, you get these bad thoughts, you get these good thoughts that come in and eventually it's like and the bad thoughts go away. Affirmations at first seem really silly. They've been made fun of a million times, like the character Stuart Smalley on Saturday Night Live. You guys probably know his affirmation. I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. The challenge is that affirmations only work if you believe them to be true 100%. So the joke with the Saturday Night Live skit is that Stuart would be really angry at all sorts of things, and then he'd say this affirmation and it would kind of like justify his anger. In real life, affirmations, you have to find 100% truth in everything you say or the affirmations completely moot. Up to this point in your lessons, we've been learning more and more about how our mind is connected to the universal mind. So the secret in finding truth to your affirmation is to connect the I in your statement as being one with the universal I. So when you say I, this is the same I we were talking about a couple weeks ago, that I in quotation marks, that's um, your bigger being. Um, when you say I, you're not only talking about yourself, but everything that you perceive in your life. So I want to break down this catch-all affirmation and show you how it's 100% true for every living human being. So first, I am whole. This statement is true as long as you're alive. People have had major losses, even amputees, 
but they're still whole. And we're told through the media mostly that we need someone who completes us. And I would argue that we're already whole. This is reflected in the universe. Even a tree that's been struck by lightning and lost its limbs, but is still living, is still a tree. It will grow and fulfill its purpose as a tree, just the same as it always has. So remember that that same energy that makes the tree whole is also in you, making you whole. No matter what happens to you in your life, as long as you're living, you're still a whole human being. To take it a step further, we're connected to all things through this universal energy so that when you say, I am whole, not only are you speaking about you, but you're speaking about everything that surrounds you. Second, I am perfect. You are built with a blueprint and each part works according to that blueprint. Not unlike a flower in a garden, the seed is planted and up comes a rose. No two roses are the same, but each rose is perfect in its own right. You also started as a single cell and perfectly grew into a thriving human being. You're different than everyone around you, but you're perfect in your own right. Everything that's happening and everything that you do is just as it should be because you are perfect. And when you say, I am perfect with a bigger I, consider your connection with your deeper spirit. Your I reflects the perfection that surrounds your entire existence. Third, I am strong. Strength comes in many different forms, physical strength, mental strength, and emotional strength. You may not feel strong in all areas, but you have a certain amount of strength in each one. A hundred year old oak tree is so strong you can't push it down, but the right gust of wind can be strong enough to take it down during a storm with no problem at all. Strength is subjective to the challenges facing you. I believe that you can find your strength in all three aspects of yourself, physical, mental, and emotional, by reminding yourself of the things that you're stronger than. Saying, I am strong, will make you feel confident and in place in your world. The fourth one is, I am powerful. Remember last week when we talked about how your mind is omnipotent? Your mind is the most powerful force in your universe. You and only you have the power to decide how to perceive your environment and the events that happen in your life. The entire universe around you has been developed by your mind. While sometimes it's difficult to grasp, you chose the town that you live in, the house you live in, the clothes you wear, the school you attended, what to study, and where to work. Every event that has and will transpire in your life happens because you willed it to be so. The power is in your mind's ability to make decisions for you. So when you say, I am powerful, you're admitting that you are ultimately the architect of your own life and your environment. So the fifth one, I am loving. There are people in your life who you love unconditionally, your family members, your friends, or your pets. You might even find that you have compassion for people that you don't even know. Focusing on the people you love makes it ultimately true that you are a loving creature, but even more, you live in a universe that shares that same energetic love. The compassion you feel when you feed your dog in the morning is no different than the compassion that an oak tree feels when it gives an acorn to a squirrel. Real love is energy, it's not conscious or rational thought, and it's all over the universe. Everywhere you look, someone or something is giving out of compassion with no need for reciprocation, and someone else is accepting that love and saying thank you. Saying I am loving allows you to see the amount, amazing amounts of compassion that not only you are giving, but is also in the universal energy that surrounds you. So sixth, the sixth one, I am harmonious. To be in harmony means to fit together in agreement. When two people sing in harmony, it means that they join sounds perfectly in a pleasing manner. Being harmonious means that you fit, whether it's with your job, with other people, in your home, with your family, or even in your own body. Being in harmony means that everything within you and outside of you ultimately wants to fit together in a perfectly pleasing way. When you pay attention to your environment, you'll see that harmony always prevails. A drought is always followed by rain. Too much rain is always followed by sunshine. And while things sometimes seem to fall apart, the equilibrium at some point will always be met. It always eventually stops raining. The universe will always meet you halfway if you allow it. When you remind yourself that harmony always prevails, you can make it through any tough spot. So notice how the universe finds its equilibrium in your day-to-day -day life. And when you realize that the universal energy that keeps the world in balance is the same energy that keeps you in harmony, you can say without a doubt that I am harmonious. And last but not least, I am happy. This is the most difficult. Happiness is what we're all searching for. So are we ever really truly happy? It depends on your, what your definition of happiness is. 
My definition of happiness is enjoying the present moment. We don't achieve happiness by gaining material possessions, and we definitely don't achieve happiness in the past or in the future. Happiness is a current state of being. It doesn't happen tomorrow. It didn't happen yesterday. Happiness can only happen now. You have a choice in how you feel at any given time. You have the opportunity to find something happy in every moment. For example, I remember going to the funeral of my Uncle Lester. While it was really sad to say goodbye to him, I look back on the joy of dinner with my extended family, reconnecting, appreciating each other, sharing our love for each other, and even sharing memories of our lost uncle. This is one of my favorite memories. Even at a funeral of a lost loved one, you can find joy and happiness in seeing friends and family and sharing stories about the deceased. I had a great time that day. And even though it was a funeral and it was sad and you can be down and, you know, it, I found a lot of happiness in being with my family. Sometimes when you're sick, you can also be happy about the fact that now you have time to rest and catch up on movies you haven't seen and recluse yourself for a little while. We all have moments of sadness, of anger, of boredom, and depression. But when you say the affirmation, I am happy, you take a second to examine your life and your environment, and you'll find that there is happiness in your life. Sometimes you have to search a little bit for it, but it's there. Again, the only way to push out the bad is to continue adding good thoughts. It's kind of like cleaning the soap out of a shampoo bottle. If you just keep putting clean water in, eventually the soap is gone and you're left with clear water. Continue putting in 100% true affirmations and feelings of being incomplete will become whole. Imperfect becomes perfect. Weak becomes strong. Meek becomes powerful. Apathetic becomes loving. Unbalanced becomes harmonious. And depression becomes happiness. So every day this week, I want you to pick a challenge that comes up in your day. Surrounding that challenge, write as many examples as you can as to why the affirmation, I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy is 100% true. So let me give you an example. So say your challenge is, I got a bad review at work and I feel like a failure. So you just list them out. So the first one, I am whole. I can say, you know what, I'm a complete human being and I get my job done at work. And I am perfect. I know my job very well, and with these new suggestions, I can be even better. The next one, I am strong. I got my review, and I didn't get obviously upset. I didn't cry in front of my boss, and it takes strength to be emotionally strong. Fourth, I am powerful. I'm in charge of my existence, and I have the ability to make my next review really awesome. Number five, I am loving. I care for my clients and my coworkers. I have compassion for my boss who doesn't like giving bad reviews any more than I like to get one. The sixth one, I am harmonious. I know that my place at work is harmonious. This bad swing will be returned by a good swing because the world likes to be in equilibrium. And then number seven, I'm happy. Someone cares about me and my job enough to help me do it better. So I'm happy to have this opportunity to improve. When you take a second to reflect on those seven statements, you can accept the bad review as something positive and continue moving forward. So remember, our worst enemy is fear. This affirmation, I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy, it stops fear dead in its tracks, like that, in like a second. So instead of getting stuck, you're able to continue moving forward, and this is true for any challenge. So for each day this week, I want you to go through the same exercise over anything that comes up that seems to drag you down. You can say this affirmation many times a day, and more importantly, you can really truly believe it. So our visualization this week takes a little bit more of a spiritual approach. I want you to visualize a plant, bringing it from the ground, from the unseen into the seen. So start with the seed in the ground, Try to enter the soul of the seed, like pretend like it's you, and feel yourself suck in the nutrients that you need from the ground. Feel the compassion from the earth as it feeds you. See the seed push the first part of itself out of the hard shell and into the dirt, and watch the roots dig into the ground for nourishment, and while the stem finds its way to the surface of the earth. Imagine how it feels when it breaks the surface and feels the sunlight for the first time. And feel the compassion from the sun as it gives you warmth. Feel the relief as your leaves open up. Visualize the bud of a flower appearing and slowly taking its time to grow until it finally opens up. And feel the proud beauty and splendor of being this plant in its prime. Watch people walk by and admire you, smelling you because you smell so good. Um, feel the compassion that you send to these people. 
And then notice a bee land on you and take some pollen and give you some pollen and feel your compassion for that bee knowing now that you are gonna grow seeds for future plants. And then the rain pours on you and you can soak up the water from the ground and feel how this water nurtures you. And then as you get older, notice how each petal falls to the ground. Feel how the earth accepts you in the fall as your leaves start to disintegrate into the ground. Be aware of the purpose of your body as it turns to carbon and begins to feed the soil that once gave you the fuel to grow. And feel your compassion for the earth and for the new seeds as you give them the nutrients to help them push themselves out of the ground. This visualization is not about learning to focus or figuring out how to build something. This visualization is about focusing on a clear image so that you can experience the soul of another thing. This is a beautiful exercise in understanding your oneness with the rest of the universe and the process of life. This experience will help you to see that you really are whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. So for your body challenge this week, it's pretty simple. We're going to add in the final four stretches. So I want you to continue your walks just like you've been doing. Um, do your regular stretches just like you have. But I want you to add the next four stretches into your memory. They're for your lats, for the side of your body here, like right under your arm, for your back behind here. They're for your inner hamstrings and also for your chest this way. Uh, they're really great stretches. And your diet challenge this week is to make a change in what you drink. While water gives us the most benefit with no side effects, drinking water is not always the most pleasing choice. You might have some habits that aren't serving you anymore. Like, do you have a glass of juice when you wake up or do you always have to have coffee to get your day started? When you go out to order soda, like when you go out to eat, do you order soda, do you order wine or beer or even a mixed drink just out of habit? Many of the habits we've created around drinking are just that, they're habits. But by breaking these habits this week, I think you'll be surprised at the healthier options that you actually have access to. But before you can make an informed decision about what to drink, you need to analyze what it actually is that you're drinking, what its purpose is for, and if there is an actual healthier option that's equally pleasing. So let's look first at what we're drinking, what your options are, and if there's a better option. The main reason that we drink is to satiate thirst. The most efficient way to get the water we need is through drinking water. I mean, it's plain and simple. So if you question the quality of your tap water, you might want to install a filter in your sink or use a pitcher-based water filter, but don't avoid water if it's not filtered. Water is water, and our bodies are strong and they'll work to pull out any toxins. There are all sorts of theories about what kind of water is the best, like ionized or high pH or mineral water and spring water, reverse osmosis. You can stress yourself out over these choices. The main thing is just drink water. It doesn't matter what kind. It's your best drinking option by far. Is filtered water better? Yeah, sure. But you shouldn't avoid drinking water just because you don't have a filtered option. Drink water. It's the best choice. Now, how much do you really need? The standard guideline of drinking eight glasses of water a day has been debunked many times. The amount of water that you need is really based on your lifestyle. It's determined by many things like exercise, the humidity, um, the temperature, how often you sweat, how often you go to the bathroom, if you're sick, or even like if you travel a lot. The easy way to tell how much you should drink is to monitor the color of your urine. Urine of a dark mustardy yellow means you're dehydrated, whereas perfectly clear urine means that you might be over drinking which can lead to temporary hyponatremia, where um, the body's sodium levels have been decreased to an unhealthy level. Both dehydration and hyponatremia can be fatal. The earliest sign of dehydration is irritability, sometimes even before you get thirsty. If you notice that you're feeling irritable on a regular basis, try having some water and see if your mood changes. <laughs> My whole family experienced dehydration at Disney World. After standing in line on a hot day, they don't have water anywhere. Like you. You wait in line, there's not a water fountain anywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. We all started to get really short with each other and irritable. I thought we were gonna get in like a fist fight, but this was like no magical day. <coughs> I immediately went out and bought us some bottles of water and then we were all back to normal. <coughs> all this talk about water. Mm. So I bought us some bottles we were good right away. Sometimes what seems like chronic irritability is just dehydration. So when you feel like ripping your eyeballs out, have a glass of water. 
your mood might change. Now on the other side of the spectrum is hyponatremia, which is much less common than dehydration because it's really difficult to drink that much water. But I've, I've seen it happen when people overhydrate to counter extreme heat or dry areas. In one instance, I was at Burning Man Festival, which is an outdoor festival in the Nevada desert where the daily temperature is well over 100 degrees. <clears throat> My friend had read this popular slogan, pee clear, to avoid dehydration, and he was overhydrating um, and flushing out all the electrolytes out of his body. Electrolytes are like sodium, potassium, calcium, and bicarbonate, and they are very important to your bodily functions. They help regulate our metabolic process, and they're crucial to our survival. He became really, really sick until we got him recharged with electrolytes. So signs of hyponatremia are headache, nausea, vomiting, and confusion. The secret, as always, is finding the harmonic balance of what your body needs. So by watching your urine color, you can make good decisions about hydration through the day. So you're gonna look for like a light yellow color. Uh, there are many debates on when we should drink water and when not to. I would say the first thing you should do when you wake up and right before going to bed is to have a glass of water. Um, after six to eight hours of not drinking during sleep, your body's really gonna be thankful. Also, there's no need to drink water while you're eating. Our body creates natural juices to aid in digestion, and water can dilute the enzymes that help break down the food we eat. Is it okay to sip a drink during a meal? Yeah, but it's not necessary. If you feel you need a drink to help you get your food down, then that's a sign that you're not chewing enough. So, chew more. Not drinking during your meal actually aids in the digestion process. So another reason why we drink sometimes is to get nutrients. Like in, you know, I have to have a glass of milk to get calcium or I need orange juice because of the vitamin C. But most juices these days are just loaded with sugar. A glass of orange juice has more sugar than a glass of soda. Milk can cause other issues that we learned a few weeks ago. It's not necessary to get nutrients from juice or milk. You'll get them through the rest of your diet. In the mornings and afternoons, it's not uncommon to drink like a sugary or caffeinated drink as a pick-me-up. Um, there are actually a lot of benefits to drinking two or more cups of coffee a day or hot tea, um, including like warding off Parkinson's disease. That one's a little iffy. The reports are yes, no, yes, no. Um, gallstones, cancer, warding off diabetes, gout, and get this, drinking coffee can help with cavities can actually help ward off cavities. So while coffee is slightly acidic and, and can cause some like gastrointestinal stuff for some people, the tannins in black and green tea can have a really therapeutic effect on your intestines. So this might be a good reason for you to switch from coffee to tea. When choosing soda, you really, you have to think of it as candy. I mean, it's like liquid candy. Even diet drinks, even like a diet soda, the studies that are out on these say that you know they can increase your waist circumference by 70% a diet soda. Um, I read another one recently where you actually, your body um, ups your insulin levels like you're drinking sugar. If you drink a, um, like an artificial sweetener, if you have some sort of artificial sweetener, as opposed to if you eat sugar before a meal, um, it boosts it up. So your body, again, like if when you try to trick your body, bad things happen. So um, diet drinks, yeah, they should cut them out. Soda is a horrible choice for a pick-me-up. Energy drinks are even worse. The chemicals in these drinks can cause all sorts of health problems from fatty livers to brain lesions. Brain lesions are holes in your brain. You don't want that. <laughs> if you stuck to the rule from week two, remember about um, keeping all your prepared foods to five ingredients or less and always things that you can buy yourself, then energy drinks and sodas probably have already made the cut. If they haven't, go ahead and get rid of them. Um, if you're a regular soda drinker and you really feel like you need it to get through the afternoon, consider replacing it with something like flavored carbonated water with tea or coffee. Now, then again, some sodas are really good and I'm never the person that says that you can never have a soda again ever in your life. I see no problem in splurging on a cherry Coke or like a really good cream soda. Uh, these are things that I like. Just like I really like a great piece of cake. Do I have a piece of cake every day? No. Do I have a piece of cake every week? No. But maybe a couple times a year or maybe once a month. Um, if, you're do, if you do do that, if you do ha decide to have a really good Coke, then enjoy every sip of it. Don't just drink it mindlessly and don't just order it because it's like included in your meal, you know? So in the evenings, 
moving forward in the day. Having a glass of wine can help you wind down after, after work, and that's not a bad idea when it's done in moderation. As a rule of thumb, though, drinking any more than four drinks if you're a man and three drinks for a woman in one sitting is considered binge drinking. And it's not only unhealthy, but it can lead to really poor decision making. And we all know the power of our minds, and we want to make use of the power of our minds. So when you dumb that down, you're kind of missing out on the great things that can happen to you. Um, a better gauge for drinking alcohol is to have no more than 14 drinks a week per man and seven drinks per week for a woman. If you have trouble staying under these guidelines, then you might have a drinking problem. And I would suggest talking to your doctor about options for quitting. Having a small amount of alcohol when handled in moderation, and especially with friends, can help us to release stress. And in my opinion, stress is the number one health threat. So if a glass of wine takes away some stress, then go for it. Wine is the best option. The mixers and hard liquor drinks are typically full of sugar. I mean, you're looking at like sodas again, things like that. Um, beer isn't much better than soda and should be treated as such. A treat every so often, but maybe not an everyday occurrence. So as an exercise this week to tie all of our lessons together, I wanna actually make a cup of tea with you. So I'm gonna start with my teacup, with the tea bag. And I also have a tray full of ice cubes that have been melting, unfortunately, as we go. So I am gonna take three ice cubes here and put them in my cup. Now I want you to imagine that the ice cubes in this cup are all negative emotions or negative thoughts or negative energy that's come up in your life. Now I'm gonna take a pitcher full of hot boiling water and I'm going to pour it over the ice very slowly and hopefully not spill it on my computer or on me. So as I do this, I'm going to say the affirmation and put it into the water that, let me see if I can, here we go. I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy and you notice those ice cubes just disappear they're gone see all that negative energy has been replaced by the heat in my teacup and with the affirmation so you can do this exercise every day when you make your tea or um you know just sitting down and after you do it you put all these positive affirmations into the cup of tea and sit in silence and slowly drink your cup. It's a great meditation that can be done in just a few minutes. It's something that you can do when you're at work, you know? You don't even have to put ice in it, really. You can just pour the water in and say your affirmation in your head as you do it. And each time you drink that cup of tea, you can remember that you're filling yourself up with positive energy. So I'm gonna have my cup of tea. And we're gonna wrap it up for today. So feel free to log off if you need to. And if anyone wants to stick around for questions and answers, um, I am here for you, all right? All right. Very good, so how's everybody doing? You guys have any questions? Anything you wanna bring up? Oh, good. Teresa, she really needed it today. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you were able to check in. I'll tell you, it took me, this affirmation is seven parts, right? Seven. And it, I think it took me like an entire week just to memorize all seven of them. But once you do, it's so great. It's a really great affirmation that can really just turn you around like that. Ah, in the beginning, um, Michelle asked, what were you saying at the beginning about week 13 to email? So when we get to work week 12, that's our halfway point. That's the, the halfway spot. And I'm, I really want people to get caught up by then if they can. Uh, I know it's hard, but I want to have, um, have people like really caught up. So what I'm hoping is that you would email me 
sometime around week 12 and between week 12 and before week 13 that you would email me your um, like a testimonial or some sort of like here's where I am at this point and trying to be completely caught up as much as you can um, and I'm going to use those case studies hopefully in the book if um, you know if anybody's really showing good progress or if anybody's really you know um, has a really great story, then I'm going to go ahead and put that in the book. And then also anybody who sends me their testimonial before week 13 will get their name written in my acknowledgments in the, when I do publish it. So this course, I mean, I don't know that I've really talked about it um, with you guys so much, but the, the purpose of this course is to, to hopefully turn it into, into a book. Um, there's no desired length. Like you can figure out you know, write whatever you want, but don't write like, it's great, I love it. But like really, you know, tell me how your experience was. And, um, you know, if it would help, let me know if it would help if I sent you out some questions to answer, because I can do that. Cool, I will do that, I'll do that. All right, Tree says, I've been having a rough time with staying on track with this program, but I'm feeling positive and re-motivated and committed, and I will be caught up by the end of week 12. Yes. You know what, Trace? Like, everyone I've talked to is having trouble staying on track. It's a long program. It's, um, you know, already nine weeks. Being committed to something for nine weeks is really hard, and it's, um, it's a lot of work. And I think certain weeks might be a little harder than others. I. I'm really interested to hear from people when they got off track or, um, you know, what really kind of where they got stuck um, to see if there's some way that I can propel that forward a little bit more in the future. But um, a lot of people are having a hard time staying on track. So don't let it fool you just or don't let it push you down or think that, like, you need to start over. Just keep moving forward and just keep going. I mean, I know that that's a... I say that is so funny, but really, you know, just even if you do the meditations on your own or even like, you know, you skip some things, decide to leave some stuff out. Like it might be enough for you to say like, you know what? I know these stretches. I don't need to do the stretches. I don't need to go on walks. I'm fine. I, you know, or maybe you decide like, you know what? I don't need to meditate so much. Like you pick and choose what's good for you. And then, um, the important thing I think is the journaling is really important. And that's something that can be done, you know, finish it and do the next one and finish it and do the next one and just keep moving forward. Um, I think that would be really helpful. Good. Michelle says, um, being able to give back to you in some way by writing a testimony will be a really awesome motivator for me. I like it. Yeah, that's great. Because I, it would very much help me out. It would help me a ton. Um, giving me some feedback too so it doesn't even if it's a testimonial like it doesn't have to be a glowing response it can be like this is my experience with this and i am um, you know i did get behind or i i had some trouble here or um i thought this meditation was crap i mean you could say stuff like that it's good for me to hear and then um i really think like being caught up by the halfway point is a great place to be it's a really good place to be very good you guys have anything else or are we good to go? Good to go. All right. I will then see you guys next week at noon. I'm, I'm excited about this week. It's actually an easy week and I think that um, it's a great week to start catching up on stuff because it really, all you do is say the same affirmation over and over and over again. You're going to be fine. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I will see you guys then. Have a great week.